what is up guys and welcome back to Jizzy Yang YouTube channel now if you've seen part one you might recognize this so this is a customer counter and basically it counts how many customers go in and out of a store or a shop so this is made to be put by a door of a shop and it can count how many people go in and out with these two sensors so this is an LCD and this is, and these are two sensors which can detect objects in front of it. And to be more specific, they're infrared proximity sensors. And we've named this sensor sensor A and this sensor sensor B under very interesting names. Then if we turn this around, around the mundo, if you turn this around, this is a breadboard and this is an Arduino Uno. So basically, these wires that con connect from the sensors in the LCD to the Arduino, the Arduino Uno. And there are these positive and negative. So how these two are connected to each other is through positive and negative power and ground. And if, and there's power on there's a power pin on this, and there's a power pin on this. So if we connect those two together, it will connect these two, and it's the same thing with ground, which is the minus. But if you get these two mixed up, you'll destroy um, an, a circuit board, a uh, PCB. In this, well, in this case, is the Arduino Uno. I'll explain this again later in the video in a lot more detail and we're going to cover basically everything about this circuit and this project. So hope you enjoy. So now to demonstrate what it can do, let's get a power bank. Yes. So this is a massive wire um, which can connect to a socket, um, USB port. So there. It's turned on. It says Jesonix LTD customer counter. It, sa it says Jesonix just because I, w I wanted to call it Jesonix. So basically, it counts how many, co how many people go in and out. Right now, I'm not so sure if this is in or this is out. But let's just try it. Anyway, so if I first go this side, it's probably not, not enough space. There's minus one, which means that this is in. A customer just went in. Not much moving space. The customer, another customer just went in. So, yeah. Anyway, there's enough examples. So, we want to put this um, massive stand with all of these electronics in it, into a more compact box. And this is what I've got. It looks like a face, because this is where the LCD is supposed to go, and this is where the sensors are supposed to go. And inside, if I take this off, here are um, some space for the breadboard at the back and the Arduino Uno at the back. So they can be put here. And yes, I, t I designed this um, by myself on a 3D designing software called Tinkercad. So if I put this back on, on a 3D designing software called Tinkercad. And if you don't believe me, there, here it is. This is, the, this is what, what I designed on Tinkercad, this. And this is pretty similar to this, isn't it? So yeah, this is what I designed and we sent it to a 3D designing company and we 3D printed it. So now all we have to do is put all of this into this. I really hope I got my dimensions correct. Otherwise we'll have to 3D print it again, which is kind of expensive. So yeah, let's get going. It is all done. Ah, hello. I don't need you anymore. So, 
This is all done. Let's slide the lid back on. Other way around. No, the other way around. I was correct earlier. So let's slide the lid on. It looks pretty clean, huh? I'm pretty impressed with it. And we had to forcefully drill a hole at the back because I forgot to add a hole for the cable. But now is the moment of truth. If I get one wire mixed up, if I get one wire in the wrong position, it could result in the whole thing crashing down. Uh, I really know if that is. Tell me if it turns blue. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Ooh, ooh, it works. The LCD works, but does the sensor work? Let's see. So, one, two, one. Woo! Yes, it works. It works, it works. Everything works perfect. So, now we've got all of this working, it's time to explain how the inside and the code all works. So, if I slide open the lid again, you can see everything inside. It may look very complicated, but once um, it's all very clear, it's pretty simple. And the main thing that makes it very messy is this very, very, very annoyingly large wire. I guess it could be useful in some circumstances, but not on this one. So we just bunch it all together. And so I need something that I can point with. Ta-da! A pencil. A pencil. So... Let's start off with the basics, power and ground. So if you're wondering how these sensors and how this LCD gets all its power, well, they get it from this Arduino, which gets it from the power bank. And how they transfer this power, also the breadboard also needs this power from this, is through power and ground. Now you need both of these to um, sort of to create power. The power pin on the Arduino's V5. The ground is just um, white. It's just white with GND on it, which is ground. So since the breadboard is connected to the Arduino, everything that the breadboard has on top of it is basically extras if the Arduino can't fit it. And then, then you might see these pins. So because... Um, the code just can't recognize straight. They are the they are the sensors. I want to do this 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 with the sensors done. Well, they don't recognize these as sensors exactly. They recognize them as pins. So this sensor, um, so this sensor's pin. Well, I I'm not really sure which sensor's which pin. One of them is pin seven, and one of them is pin two. And in the code, you'll write um, pin 7, um, whatever, 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 which me which tells it um, the pin 7 sensor to do this, this, this. So, yeah, that's how the sensors work. This was pins, which is connected to the Arduino. But then there's the LCD, which is a lot more confusing. So... So this, these um, sensors have three pins. There's the um, power and ground. Then there's a signal. So there's three wires. So then there's the LCD, which has four wires. Um, two of them are power and ground. And then the other two are I square C wires. So because these um, two sensors are just transmitting binary, one, zero, one, one and zeros to this. Very simple, very little storage. You just have to go zero, 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 zero. If the sensor detects something, it will disturb the zeros and turn it into one. Then the um, Arduino can read that and be like, yep, this, th there's a one in this binary. It means someone's, which means the sensor has detected something. So that's how the binary on these work but then on this it isn't binary it's something called i square c and it's a lot more um, advanced and a lot more confusing to explain but basically they transmit a lot more data a lot more bytes of data um, 
around four bytes, is it? So around 32 bits, and it just transmits its data um, through two wires. One device sends data um, using the using I square C, and the other port receives the message through I square C. So basically, I square C is sort of a language. It's like when you communicate to someone else, I want some food. Um, you have to communicate to them, I want some food, um, through a language, whatever language it is. Um, but if you're understanding this video, it'll probably be English. So that's how these um, all work. That's the hardware side of things. And then there's the software side of things. So there are these sort of, the, uh, there are two main functions, which is void setup and void loop. So void setup tells this whole thing what it should do, um, everything that it should do before um, all the action happens, like detecting things. In this case, um, we told it to write Jesonix customer counter. Um, so yeah, it just does that and resetting everything is what the setup tells it to do. And then we move on to the loops, which is just basically the sort of code which tells it the very simple algorithm which tells it um, how to detect people going in and out. And how this very simple algorithm actually works is, imagine this is sensor A, this is sensor B. So sensor A is basically saying, if sensor A detects something, then in a time period of around 0.1 seconds to 0.5 seconds, um, the, the other sensor detects something, then it means that someone's went in and the same thing going out. So the reason why there's a time difference, 0, 0.1 to 0 0.5, is because that is the average speed of a walking human um, in the distance of these two sensors. So if it, if sensor A detects something, um, but sensor B doesn't um, in the period of time between 0 0.1 and 0 0.5 seconds, then it will be known as a false alarm and they just go back to the usual binary loop 0000. And it's the same thing going out. So basically it's in simple terms, if sensor A detects something, then sensor B detects something, it means someone's went in. If sensor B detects something, then sensor A detects something, it means that someone's went out. And one thing I'm really impressed with is my measuring. I've got these sensor holes exactly correct. Same with the LCD, but I forgot to add this, but it kind of sucks, but... We still got this end result, which is amazing. Um, but unfortunately, there are two Ys which seem like they're about to break. So we will replace that um, later. But yeah, this will be my first project. Hope we can move on to some more advanced stuff and I'll inform you on that. And yeah, this is my lovely customer counter and I'll see you next time. Bye!